Welcome back to the Credible Dev YouTube channel. Today, I've got another Portainer video for you where we're going to be setting up Plex on Portainer. Before we get into that, thank you for all the new subscribers. Thank you for checking out this video. And let's go ahead and jump right into it. So if you're not familiar with Plex, Plex is a home media server. You can put TV shows, uh, movies. They now even have kind of like their own content that they've been bringing into it. So it's a really cool setup that you can have at home. Your TVs, like your Roku TVs, all your, your internet connected TVs can typically connect to it. Uh, you can also view it on your phone, on your laptops, computers, whatever. It's really neat. If you've never tried it out, it's something that you might want to look at and at least experience and see if it's something that you can use. So what we're going to be doing is, is setting up a Plex container on Portainer and in order to get content onto it we're going to be using an NFS share that's coming from Open Media Vault. Now there's other ways that you could do this but this is the way that I prefer to do it because then I can just connect to the NFS share on another computer to upload content to it. Uh, so I really don't ever have to touch Plex and the Plex container much itself. I can just put all the content through the NFS share and we just get it all in Plex. So that's what we're going to be setting up. And we'll actually be starting out with going over the NFS share in Open Media Vault and how that's set up. And then we'll move on to bringing that share into Portainer. So that way, when we create our Plex container, we can connect the two together so that Plex is aware and can access that NFS share. So let's go ahead and get started. And like I said, first we'll take a look at um, our Open Media Vault. And in Open Media Vault, I have an NFS share here. And this share is called Plex underscore content. And where this comes from is there's a hard drive that I have passed through. Open Media Vault is running on um, my Proxmox, and I pass through a full hard disk to the Open Media Vault so that I can use it for shares and stuff. So that's what this is here. This uh, SDB device is that pass through hard disk. And then from there, we create a share folder on that, on that drive. And then when you set up the NFS share, you select that share folder. And then you can restrict the access to it by subnet and IP, stuff like that, in order to control who can access it. There's more you can do with NFS if you wanted to tie it to particular users and things like that, but I don't have that set up. You can also do a SMB share, and you can bring that into Portainer like we are this NFS share. So from here, we'll go ahead and jump over to Portainer to create the volume that we need to share with Plex so it can have access to the content. If you don't have Portainer installed and that's something you're interested in doing, be sure to check out the video. I'll have it linked down below. Uh, there's also a blog post that goes over this process as well. So if you got Proxmox or you got a, a system available that you can install Portainer on, the guide will help walk you through that so you can kind of catch up to where we are now. So in order to create the volume that we need, we'll log into Portainer and you'll go to Volumes. And up here, we're going to click on Add Volume. And we're going to give it a name. We'll just call it plex underscore underscore content and here we want to select nfs volume now it gives you a little note here that you need to install nfs utils on the host so wherever you have portainer install that that's where you need to make sure that you have the nfs utils installed and depending on the os that you use like mine's ubuntu uh it's nfs dash common in order to get that set up, you need to install that first. If you don't, then whenever you try to create this, vo uh, well, actually, when you it'll let you create the volume, but whenever you try to uh, create the Plex container, you're going to run into a problem, and it's not going to set up properly. So make sure that you do that first. So you can SSH into your portainer or however you want to connect to it, 
and make sure you get that package installed prior to doing this step. So here, what I'm going to be doing, since my NFS share is hosted on Open Media Vault, is I'll be putting in the IP address of my Open Media Vault server. Put that in here. Now the next thing that we're going to want to do is the mount point. So that's this Plex content is what we're going to be putting here. And we prefix that with a colon and a slash. So we'll do colon slash Plex content. And that's really all you have to do here. You could do further configurations with these options if you need to for your particular setup. Like if you had it tied to a particular user account, like a UID, you might need to do some of that stuff here. But for what I have set up, no additional settings need to be changed here. So from here, we can just click on create volume. And now we can see that Plex content can, uh, volume here, and it says it's unused. And that's because we don't have it attached to an actual container yet. So to attach it to a container, we first need to create one. The easiest thing to do is to use app templates. And I might have a link down below for the app templates. And this is the GitHub where they come from. They also have a website here that kind of lists all of the stuff that's, that's in here. Uh, but in order to get this set up, they give you a link here. You just want to copy this link. And then you're going to go into your settings. And right here where it says app templates, templates, and URL, you're going to put that URL here. Previously in the Portainer video, uh, where I installed Portainer, I was using this set of app templates, but this one's not as updated as often as this one is. So I've been using this one for a while now. So back to our app templates, we're going to search for Plex, and then you're going to want to choose Plex Media Server right here. And you can configure this however you want, change the name of it. If you need to change the network on it, I'm not going to be changing that. But I am going to change the time zone here to Chicago, so that would be Central Time. And then under Show Advanced Options, you're going to want to click this. And here we're going to set up the volume that we just added. And because of the way I have it set up in Open Media Vault, it's just Plex content. I didn't create NFS shares for like movies, TV shows, and things like that separately. Uh, the way that I have it set up is it's just Plex content, and then within that, I can just go find the folder that I want for movies and things like that. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to remove this one that says movies and the one that says music, and I'm going to change this to just say Plex content. You can call it whatever you want. And then here we're going to choose volume and click this drop down. And then I'm going to choose the Plex content volume that I just set up a moment ago. And that's really all that you need to configure here. There's other things you could do if you need to do them for your specific use case. But for what I'm doing here today, that's all we're going to set up. And then we'll click on deploy container. And it doesn't take very long. We'll see that it is set up and that it is running. Now, it doesn't really tell you the port here, and you kind of need to know, or you could look in the documentation about what port you can access Plex on to get to the web interface to finish the setup. Uh, but it's going to be port 32,400. So what we'll do is, is we'll open up a new tab, and we're going to use the IP address of our uh, portainer server, and then the port 32,400 forward slash web. If it's up, we'll be able to get to that. Hmm. The IP address wrong there. 168, not 128. And so if you if you've never been into Plex before or haven't set it up like I have, you're gonna have a few screens that you're gonna get to um, like about setting up an account and, and all those kind of things. And then it's gonna ask you to set up your media libraries. And let me see if I can kind of show you 
what that would look like. We go to library, uh, manage libraries. So let me remove this library. And then we'll add a library. So that way you can see what this is going to look like when you're setting it up. So let's say movies. We'll go to next. Browse for a media folder. And then here we see that Plex content folder that we set up just a moment ago. And then in here, I have a videos folder. So like I said, you could, you, if you do it the way that I did it, you could create multiple folders here to separate out the different types of content, like TV shows, movies, whatever. And we're just going to click on movies. I have a few video files added in here, and then we'll click on add library. And then typically what you're going to want to do is, is come over here and you're going to scan library for files and the way that Plex works, it's going to try to determine what the video is, and sometimes it gets it wrong. Like these videos were ones that were from my YouTube channel, uh, videos that I had, videos that I had uploaded. So, in order to kind of undo or it tried to figure out what these were, obviously it got it wrong. I don't even know what the Wild Rose is from 1977, but you can go into these. And then you can click on unmatch and then that'll take away all that stuff that it did there as far as the, the screen cap and stuff. So that's pretty much it for setting us up. It's not too difficult. And like I said, doing it this way, you could just mount this NFS share on one of your other computers and drag and drop over your content that you're wanting to put on the Plex. So if you have any questions about this, you want to know how to set up the open media vault maybe, or, you know, mounting NFS shares. I didn't go into that in that video because there's a lot of guides out there for it already. But if you feel like there's a need for me to do that kind of thing, let me know down in the comments. I'll make a video about it for you to help you out. So that's all I got for today. I appreciate you checking out this video. I hope everybody has a great weekend and I'll see you later.